Hello, and welcome to the Uncommon Commander. My name is Ryan, and I'll be your host. I'm going outside my usual video format today and doing something that you've probably seen other channels do, but it's new to me, so hopefully I don't suck at it. Today we're going to go through some Strixhaven and Commander 2021 cards, which are basically Strixhaven Commander, and I'm going to showcase the ones I found the most interesting. Yeah, I know, I'm like a month behind getting this video out, and I shouldn't have even bothered. But I put a lot of work into this, so too bad. This video is happening. Now, these cards may not be the best ones, but they're all pretty darn good. And like I said, they're the cards that I find the most interesting. Some of these will be new effects, and others will be new, interesting versions of old effects. If you enjoy this video format, by the way, please let me know by liking the video or commenting on it. I'm going to do a couple more of these countdown videos, and if they do well, I'll add this type of video to my regular repertoire. Now, on to the list. I tried to limit this list today to 10 cards. That said, I do have some honorable mentions. I actually really love the idea of honorable mentions, by the way. I love it because it lets me cheat at countdown lists. It would have been so hard to limit this to 10 cards, but thanks to the guy who invented honorable mentions, I don't have to. Our first honorable mention today is going to be Blot Out the Sky, which is the black and white version of Martial Coup. Given the slightly more difficult casting cost for the board wipe portion of it, you are given better tokens than with Martial Coup, and it destroys all non-land permanents rather than just creatures. I'd say that's a worthy trade-off. We also have Plum the Forbidden, which I won't say much about except that it is an absolute beast of a card draw spell in an Aristocrats deck. And you know I love me some aristocrats. Callous Blood Mage is another one. It isn't really all that interesting, but it is good, so I thought I'd mention it. Darn useful for a blink and flicker deck. Finally, we have Cody. This one is interesting. I just can't figure out how interesting. I don't know, either way, this is a pretty cool card, and I'll be brewing it eventually, once I figure out what the heck to do with it. Now, with these honorable mentions out of the way, let's talk about the most interesting cards in Strixhaven. First up, we have Double Major. The coolest thing about this card is that it does a weird sort of Sakashima impression, making a copy of the creature spell that you have on the stack, and letting the resulting creature token come down with the legendary rule not applying to it. I saw someone on Reddit mention that this is pretty amazing with Omnath Locus of Creation, getting double landfall triggers, which makes it absolutely insane with fetch lands which will give you 8 life and 8 mana if you have both Omnaths out. And that's just one example of a legendary creature being broken if there are two copies in play. What about Bruvac or Vornklex Monstrous Raider? The bad news about this card is that it doesn't actually say create a token, so I'm fairly certain that token doublers do not work with this. Ah, sad day. Next on our list is Archaeomancer's Map. This is a white ramp spell that is an absolute dream for Mono White, and would be further up this list if it weren't for its $20 price tag. The downsides here are that the lands you search up have to be planes, and neither of them actually goes into play. The upside is that if you're not the first in the turn order, there's a good chance that one of them will go into play anyway, and since this is an artifact and not a sorcery, anytime you fall behind while you've got lands in your hand, you'll get to ramp. This is obviously a different effect, but it actually reminds me a bit of the green land engines like Abundance or Into the Wilds. Moving along, our next card is Oversimplify. In my opinion, this is the coolest board wipe for Simic decks. Not the best one, that honor probably goes to Cyclonic Rift, but the coolest one. I'd run this 8,000 times before I'd run a Cyclonic Rift again. Anyway, for those who can't see it, when this spell resolves, you exile all creatures. Then each player creates a 0-0 fractal creature token and puts a plus one plus one counter on it for each creature they controlled that was exiled. Yeah, you're giving people some big monsters to swing with, but this is an exiling board wipe in colors that just don't do that. It's, in my opinion, a color pie break, but I'm okay with the occasional color pie break. This one is one that I'm totally okay with, especially since there's a potential drawback to it. 
It's also in colors that are pretty good at making lots of small tokens, so there's a good chance that you'll end up with the biggest creature if you put it in the right deck. Now you're just a primal rage away from potential victory. And speaking of victory, Surge to Victory is coming in as our number 7 card. This thing is pretty... Uh, neat. With this, you exile a target, instant, or sorcery from your graveyard, and creatures you control get plus X plus 0 until the end of the turn, where X is the exiled card's mana value. Then, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player this turn, you copy the exiled card and can cast it without paying its mana cost. This card is definitely a potential game ender, especially in something like Subira Tulsdi Caravaner. I like the idea of combining Glaring Spotlight here with either a big mana sorcery and just a couple of creatures, or tons of tiny creatures and a sorcery or instant of literally any size. Bonus points if that instant or sorcery is a power buff. Can you imagine using Blood Frenzy as the spell, with stocking vengeance on the board? Youch. I almost want to brew our number 6 card, Yodora. Thing is, the obvious route is Morph Creatures, but I already have a Kadena deck. I think a combination of cards that enable land creatures and vanilla creatures could be fun though. I know I say this all the time, but this could also be a pretty unique mono green aristocrats deck, and then you use your new lands that used to be your creatures as ramp for some X spells. Or maybe you put her in the 99 of a Mina and Den deck. Just saying. And it's that time again. That's right, you thought this isn't a deck tech video, so that stupid segment that's always at the end of this guy's videos won't be there. But I'm afraid you were wrong. I can force a final countdown into literally anything. That's right, this is the final countdown! And without wasting time, these are our final five cards on the list. Red's been getting some pretty cool stuff in recent sets, and this continues with Strixhaven and Commander 21. At number five, we have the red card. Battle Mage's Bracers. This equipment gives haste and has another ability that says, whenever an ability of the equipped creature is activated, if it isn't a mana ability, you may pay one generic mana. If you do, copy that ability and you may choose new targets for the copy. It's not as good as Rings of Bright Hearth, given the color restriction and it being an equipment, but it's still pretty good. I particularly like this for my giant Ballard Task Mage deck and I very much doubt that's the most broken way to use the card. Another fun little toy that Red got was the awesome mana rock, Cursed Mirror. That's right, at number 4, this artifact will add a red mana to your pool when you tap it. But when it enters play, it'll also become a copy of a target creature until the end of the turn. And it has haste. Immediately, my mind goes to the ETB creatures, Molten Primordial, and Combustible Gear Hulk. But I also think Tyrant of Discord could be... Mm, fun? If you're casting it on curve, Dockside Extortionist could be a heck of a target too. And that's just for Mono Red, there are plenty of possibilities in other colors. And, well, it turns out I really loved the red cards in this set because I'm moving on to our number 3 card on our list, and it's also red. It's Conspiracy Theorist. For 40 cents and 2 mana, this thing has a pretty sweet ability. I'm specifically referring to its second ability, which says, whenever you discard one or more non-land cards, you may exile one of them from your graveyard. If you do, you may cast it this turn. His first ability really just lets us loot when he attacks, which enables his second ability. And you're not going to want to do that unless you're sure he won't be blocked and killed. Normally you're going to be using this with the plethora of red spells that require discarding a card in order to draw, like Wild Guess or one of the wheel spells, like Reforge the Soul. This one isn't flashy, but it adds value to red that it can really use, and at a budget price. My two favorite cards in this set are quite splashy, and I think I'll save the splashiest one for last. So at number two, we have a really fantastic defensive spell, Ink Shield. This Orzhov colored instant is a surefire way to flip the game on its head when someone swings in for an alpha strike against you. I'm a huge fan of alternative pillow fort cards like Comeuppance and Arachnophobia, so this one is absolutely my jam. If someone would hit you for 10 damage, you get to create 10 creature tokens, and they're not just 1 1s like you might expect, but 2 1s, which is a massive power difference. On top of that, they're flying. This is just too much Wizards of the Coast, and I love it. But now we're down to number 1, 
and it's a hard to cast, splashy instant. The card is Harness Infinity, which costs a generic mana, 3 black mana, and 3 green mana. What you get for that insane casting cost is just one of the most powerful single effects I've ever seen printed. Exchange your hand and graveyard. Once that's done, exile Harness Infinity. This spell is Shades of Morality Shift, which is one of my favorite spells that I've never gotten to cast. But I really like the idea of Morality Shift, especially in combination with something like Hive Mind. Adding blue into a deck with Harness Infinity may make Harness Infinity borderline impossible to cast given its color requirements though, and it wouldn't be as good as Morality Shift in that combo anyway. That said, if you're playing Golgari and filling your graveyard quickly, this spell might as well read, discard your hand, draw something like 20 cards. I can imagine the damage this could do with Sir Conrad in play. It's big, it's hard to use, it's stupid, it requires an insane setup, and it's absolutely beautiful. Cards like this are the reason I play EDH. Well, thanks for watching guys. If you'd be so kind and want to help my channel grow, hit the like button and maybe the subscribe button. If you've been rooting around through all your strict saving cards, let me know in the comments which ones are your favorites. And I'll see you next video. Bye!